Okay. Welcome everybody. Thanks for attending our Lunch and Learn webinars where we will be focusing today on one of our products, which some of you might be familiar with, some not, but it's called ANSYS Discovery. So it's one of our entry level products um, which can be used across the board from academic to commercial. And just wanted to say welcome and enjoy the session with us. You're welcome to ask questions. We will have a Q&A at the end and I will hand over to Isa Foster, who will be um, actually taking the entire webinar from here. So over to you, Isa, and thank you very much. Thanks, Laura. Thanks everybody for joining. Um, I, I usually, um, don't do webinars like this, uh, technically with a real demo of the software, but I'm looking forward to it because I I think we should have more of those, but I still have to start with a presentation um, for everybody to understand exactly what this is about and who is ANSYS and who are we. So just a quick introduction. So Kifun Soft is the reseller um, in, in Africa for ANSYS software. Uh, we're doing extremely well with it. And I think that... The reason for that is that ANSYS is the industry leading simulation tool. And we are having extreme success with this, and they're having extreme success in within the simulation community worldwide. Um, because the strategy uh, was to acquire different physics technologies over the last uh, 20 years and to build a unified uh, simulation platform. Uh, we've got excellent tools in each physics division, and ANSYS is really a very large, um, it has a very large product portfolio. The reason for for this is all the acquisitions, and the bigger picture is to actually have a unified simulation environment um, that can do everything and, and make the coupling between these things pretty seamless. Um, as you can see from that slide, we've got thousands and thousands of customers worldwide. I think these are our top companies using our tools, just to give you an idea of who you're dealing with. Um, we, are not a, we are not a new kid on the block. Kifu Software has been existing for close to, uh, well, more than 20 years. And um, we are now a team of about 12 people, and we provide simulation software, training, um, and technical support to all of South Africa. So that's enough uh, introduction for, for now. I want to start by talking about simulation uh, over the last 20 years. And I think um, everybody can vouch for this where simulation kind of started playing a role, more, a role more to the end of the life cycle where the prototypes has been built or the equipment has been installed already. Um, and then there's some problems and then there's always the FEA to, to try and sort out the problem, uh, sometimes a court case in some cases. And everybody is talking about moving simulation earlier on in the design process, which is a great idea. And we're starting to see that happening where people are doing more simulation up front. But there's still a bit of a challenge when you have to do this because um, initially there's a concept that happens in the boardroom with paper, uh, maybe a whiteboard. And then somebody has to go and model some pre preliminary kind of prototype or parts or assemblies. And that still usually happens in something like SolidWorks or Autodesk or Creo, et cetera. And then um, the concepts are being tested. Maybe there's a simulation guy doing some simulations before they start making manufacturing drawings for the prototype. Um, and the other trend as well is to have one simulation seat per company. So large companies, a lot of our customers has got one seat of ANSYS Mechanical or CFD. And then there's... Um, so much work for that one guy because it's an expensive tool and you have to have an expert to use this. Um, so ANSA saw this gap and they created a tool which is really changing the way that we will be designing um, in the next, I would suppose, 20, 50 years. Um, and that is to create a tool for simulation engineer, uh, for, for design engineers and for experts to start developing a concept. Uh, with simulation, and we're talking about real-time simulation. So this simulation is is not taking the traditional long time to operate. It's a low-cost tool, so it's more affordable for companies to have this earlier on in the process and have uh, designers use the tool. Um, simulation experts, they are a breed of their own traditionally, 
Well, it's very clever people with a lot of experience in FEA modeling or CFD modeling specifically. Um, that this tool from ANSYS, ANSYS Discovery, takes away um, the need for a very experienced simulation engineer. So what I mean by that is um, you don't have to worry that much about mesh anymore like you had to 20, 15, 10 years ago um, because the software case takes care of that automatically. Uh, GPU solving makes things faster, so we, we don't have to optimize simulations that much anymore to, to solve within a reasonable time. Um, and this is a wonderful tool because it happens in real time based on what graphics card you have and GPU solving. If I can maybe say something about GPU solving, um, GPUs or graphical processing units started originating with, with computer gaming because people wanted to play, play nice computer games, so they had to process graphics really, really quickly. And you have to present uh, calculations to a CPU and a GPU differently. And that's why the hardware development leans more towards the GPU side and then is driven by gaming, which is entertainment, which is always proven to, 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 to get a lot of money um, for R&D. Um, and this, you will see this now live in my demo. Uh, design engineers has got access in SolidWorks and Inventor and Creance and, and, and all the care tools to some kind of simulation, but that still works in a traditional way where you have to mesh something, you have to put up boundary conditions, you have to solve it, wait for the solution. And the problem or the challenge with these things were that uh, design engineers and even simulation engineers or just engineers uh, started building really complex models in a CAD system where the tool was intended for, for maybe a small assembly of three to five parts to solve efficiently. And then we get a lot of inquiry on answers, mechanical and CFT due to uh, the fact that these large models can't solve in, in uh, CAD embedded software um, because it's not intended for that. I mean, if you look at the CAD companies, uh, SolidWorks and Autodesk, they focus on creating software to generate models, assemblies, and do manufacturing drawings. So their, their strategy and approach is completely different. Simulation is coming in as an add-on, and it's not even part of the, of the basic packages. Um, you have to buy this as an add-on if you want to do simulation because that's not really their focus. Their focus is to have the best CAD model. Um, so this tool comes in a different place. And I'll show that to you in my, in my, in my, in my demo. Um, the one cool thing about answer discovery is that the solvers behind the software is reputable solvers from ANSYS. And we've had the best solvers with FA and CFT for many, many years. And that's being enhanced by the GPU solving in Fluent, et cetera, and that will soon be available in the FEA side of things as well. But um, this is a very exciting product for ANSYS because I think this is where simulation will go in the future. We will have real-time simulation running on GPU, um, and there, there might be still the traditional way to do things, but I think for, for where simulation technologies are going, this is the future. And I think ANSYS is up there. Um, leading the pack. Um, so let's talk about upfront simulation. The upfront simulation, I'll show my demo very quickly, um, is to get tasked with something that you doesn't necessarily have a lot of experience with. And then you need to do some simulation to make sure that this thing will kind of work before you go to the CAD guys to create drawings for the prototype. And that's the whole idea of this, to have a tool that can very quickly show you if your design will work or if it will perform um, according to your specification. This means that this tool also has to have a geometry side of things. Uh, so you would need to, uh, to be able to model uh, geometry in it. And it doesn't need to be a complex modeling tool. Well, it shouldn't be a complex modeling tool because you, would, you want to create geometries very quickly. Um, all the demos and everything you see from Discovery has got these fancy models like this. Um, but I see it as a, as a different tool where and I'll show it to you in my demo where um, you want to get the concept to work, you want to get dimensional um, relationships correct and boundary conditions correct to make sure that your design will perform. And for that, you, you, you need a very quick, robust, free-form modeling tool. So there shouldn't be a tree, there shouldn't be dependencies, etc. You just want to model geometry. Um, and then after you've done, you've done this preliminary simulation, you can inter integrate this with the ANSYS full-blown solvers and you can do detailed simulation 
uh, and that accounts for structural and thermal electromagnetics um, fluids and then topology optimization these days with digital manufacturing. Uh, the life physics solver is is based on a different algorithm. Um, it's it's using uh, it's using the the, the fluent GPU solver um, on the refined stage. I'll show that to you quickly. But it's basically a lattice Boltzmann equation solver for CFD, and kind of a similar thing for FEA uh, to get a results very quickly. Uh, let's say, for example, your accuracy is within twenty percent. The idea of this tool is to to look at trends. So even if you make a 10% error in a pressure somewhere, um, if you if you change ge geometric uh, properties, et cetera, and test the concept, that 10% error will remain, but you can see trends in the software. Um, we do get very accurate uh, results from discovery these days, especially with an influence solver. Um, but I'm just making a point to say, well, if you, if you need to get an answer very quickly, if this is gonna work, do you really need that accuracy that the full-blown solvers can offer? And you can still take it to there if you want to take it um, that way. Uh, I think those are major things that we're going to talk about today is, is, is mechanical and CFD upfront simulation. I'm going to show something on CFD. Uh, it just looks nicer and it's very easy to demo that kind of thing. But we also include electromagnetic solvers. Um, and this is... Uh, this is very powerful. I think our audience today is not, not non-electronic, it's more mechanical, um, but this is now available in discovery as well. And we can see from ANSYS, they are putting more and more functionality um, inside this solver. Then the other important factor is geometry prep for simulation. Um, sometimes the geometry does come from a CAD package and there's stuff like welding gaps, um, a lot of detail that's not necessary for the simulation, and that will only complicate um, the amount of uh, calculations that has to be done. Um, so there's some things you can remove for the simulation. I mean, on this thing, if there's an internal flow model in this, you don't need all the outside, um, all the outside detail. You just want the flow volume. So then you don't need all these things. And, and, and as discovery modeling, which is a nice fancy new word for ANSYS space claim, um, is really good at simplifying these geometries very quickly. Then we've got seamless CAD connection with uh, all the major mechanical CAD packages, Creo, SolidWorks, PTR, Autodesk, Siemens, um, and you can natively open those files if you want to. You don't need to buy a translator, et cetera, which you can get your molds in very, very quickly. And then after you've done your preliminary simulation, uh, there's a little button that's, that, that says, uh, um, take this to ANSYS workbench for mechanical or firms, and it will remember your geometry, it will remember your, 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 your mesh, your boundary conditions, um, and you can continue there with advanced physics. So I see this in the application where there's a drawing office with a bunch of design engineers. They do some preliminary um, uh, simulation to come up with, with geometries or parts. And then that um, gets then taken over um, to, to the engineers to do a, a more detailed simulation. Um, and then from there, the, the detailed models can be created. So it's a cool tool. I think it fits very well into what um, where simulation will go and design will go. Is there any questions at this point before I start with my real demo? Uh, Isaac, yes, there's a few questions in the chat. I don't know if you've seen. I can't see that exactly um, uh, because I've got there's one, one just up. asking, Aaron. can you recommend a suitable computer specification for students and training purposes using discovery? I think maybe okay. we will send that even in an email afterwards once we send it. Yeah, I can say something about it quickly. So, um, okay. so the artery requirement for this is obviously a computer with a nice process for i7 or so, and then the the, the bulk of the calculations is happening with the GPU. So you would need a NVIDIA GPU, and that can be a GeForce or um, I'm using a I'm using a a, um, a GeForce RTX card uh, 3060. Uh, I think the card is roughly 6,000 rand or so uh, to get that card. You can also get an A100 card if you've got 100,000 rand, and that will solve very quickly. But everything is based on uh, the solving speed is is reliant on what um, 
on what heart we have. That's something that will always change, I think, in the future. Currently, uh, workstations doesn't have nice GPUs in. You have to order that per se specifically. Um, but I think that that technology is is, is definitely um, getting to a point where everybody will have a nice GPU because most applications are starting to transition towards GPU solving. Okay, that's the one question I see. Can I carry on? I think you can carry on. Okay. All right, so uh, so I'm a sales guy at Kufin. I used to study engineering many, 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 many years ago. And um, I want to design something that I don't necessarily know too much about. So this is a perfect example of what we're going to do. I will be designing a, a Venturi mixer. Um, and if you're familiar with the Venturi, is, it's, it's just a narrowing of the pipe kind of thing to suck up some free out and mix it into the mainstream. So first off, I need to design or create geometry. Now within that's discovery modeling, it's very easy to start sketching. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna start sketching. I want to choose a different plane. I'm gonna do it this way. Um, and let's start with the venturi kind of thing. And I'm going to make a 10 millimeter diamond circle there, and then I will pull this. That's the pull tool, if you're familiar with ANSYS. This is a great, great tool. The other cool thing is to, you can copy and, sorry. I see I haven't, I haven't. Did I share my screen? Hey guys, let's start from scratch. Just share my screen again, the right one this time. There we go. If I can get an indication if my screen is being shared. I saw, yes, I'm seeing it. So it's, it's being shared. Fantastic. Okay. Let me start. Uh, so I've opened as a discovery now, and I'm going to start with creating some geometry. I've selected two axes, uh, and I want to create a circle. And there's a great tool inside this that they call the pull tool. And you can pull so many things uh, into solid 3D geometry. I'm going to do that. This is now the, 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 the narrow section of this. The other very cool thing about this tool is you can copy a, paste, a face and you can paste it. And then you can move that face along the edge for uh, a lot of time. And once again with the pull tool, so you can see this tool is really very easy to use, a very user-friendly tool to use. Um, let's make that a bit more in relation. So I'll do that, and then I'll just do a loft between this and this, and I'll tell it to make it set my segments, uh, something like this. And I want to do the same to the back side of this. I'll take that face and copy it, and I'll move it. Uh, let's make this one about 30 millimeters away, and I can Increase the size there, so to be that. And then I will do this kind of thing. Again, let's make it straight and straightforward to do. And then I'll just um, pull these faces to have a kind of a outlet flow. Uh, let's make it 30 millimeters like this. Uh, so I'll do the same thing. All right, so I've got kind of a Venturi mixer going. The only thing I still need to do is to make inlet from at the bottom that will suck up the fluid. So I'll select two axes, I'll make a plane, and I'll move that plane a bit down because I want to come from, from lower. I think about 20 millimeters would be great. And then I'm going to start drawing on this face. I just want to make sure that I, from the right angle, let me go to the bottom side. There's a bottom view somewhere, yes. So let's check the size. I need to make this. Let's make it eight millimeters. All right. That's pretty straightforward. And now I can take that thing and I can pull it and I can go and tell it pull it up to there for me. All right. And now I don't need this plane anymore, so I can delete that. So that's basically. A very simple geometry. The cool thing about this geometry and the reason why I created it like this is that I'm able to very quickly change parameters here. If I tell it move for me, 
that section in that direction. Um, I can make it longer and shorter if I want to. I can also move an edge. And if I reach, move that edge, I can change that angle if you can see uh, what I'm doing there. Um, because on these Venturi mixes, you ideally want the sharp angle on the inlet side. We're going to push the fluid from this side. Uh, so it accelerates very quickly through this little neck here, and that will suck up the fluid. And then you want um, this this angle to be a small angle so that the, the, the mixing, um, well, to fine tune the mixing in a way. All right, the one thing I still need to do about this geometry is to actually make it a shell. So I, you can do it in one or two ways in Discovery. You can either use this as the fluid volume if you want to, or you can just tell it, I want to make a shell of this because maybe you want to do uh, some FEA simulation later on the shell itself to see what pressure it can handle, etc. So I'll do something like this. Um, let's just shut it like that, and there we've got a shell. And now I can start doing some simulation. Right. So, so, so this tool is uh, is really easy to use. It's a very familiar interface. So, designer's got all your sketching tools there. There's the the three D geometry creating tools. You can split bodies. You can shell things, make planes, and the, this is the traditional way of creating spheres and cylinders. Very easy to use. Um, then on display, I can give some certain things, colors and transparency. I can display um, pictures to look very nice. We just remember, if you go to graphics and you go to an odd shader, for example, which is in, it takes a bit more resource. Then I can do some measurements. Um, I can go to facets. So this is a this is. A tool that's being used a lot by uh, from from scan data um, for digital printing. Um, there's a lot of these tools there, and then the repair tool for fixing geometries for simulation. Sometimes you get geometry coming in to space time, and then you need to fix it for simulation. I'm going to go to the prepare tab now because I want to do a volume extract of this whole thing. So volume extract is very easy to do. Uh, it asks me to select uh, capping faces. So I want to cap that face there. And I'll hold down my control to select multiple faces at once. So I'll go here and I'll cap these faces. And then I have to tell it the seeding face. So it's just a face on the inside so it can actually extract the third volume for me. And you can see here on the tree now, on this design, there is a, a volume. That is, the, that is this part here on the inside. You can see it's choosing the whole thing. And this is solid. That's the outside of it. Right. I'm going to move to the simulation tab now. We can actually hide this solid. We don't need that anymore. So I can just hide that away. And now I've got only the fluid volume. I can uh, later switch it on again if I want to do some other studies, etc. Right. So let's go to this. Uh, this view is maybe better for setting our boundary conditions. And first, I need to tell it that I want to specify a material for this. And I'll just type in water here. There's two waters uh, available in this, this discovery. There's a Granta water model, which is a, a, two, a, a it's our material database. You can see there's a whole bunch of materials. Uh, let me just go there. You can see all these materials are available. It's uh, hundreds of materials that you can choose from. That's why I just type in water. I'm going to use the as discovery water. You'll see there's an indication visually that it's actually now water. And now I can start up setting up some, up some boundary conditions. Um, so let's do a fluid flow. And you can set now up this, this predefined boundary conditions. I'm quickly going to go through them. Uh, I'm just going to do a fluid flow inlet. That's that flow there, inlet. And I can select a face for an inlet. And you will see that I can assign certain parameters to that. So let's go and give it a pressure. I think about three bar would be fine. Um, and that will be then added into my tree on the left hand side. I can switch on gravity on and off if I want to. Um, going to make a big, big difference for this simulation. Let's switch it on. Uh, you can also add a fan. And this is a fan for electronic cooling, mostly, where you can enter a fan curve or you can tab give tabulated data into that. Um, you can specify a, a wall. Uh, if you've got a specific wall that you want to define with the simple geometry, then we've got uh, in the latest version porous zones. So this is like filters uh, where you want to want to specify um, a porous zone or filter or a coefficient of uh, what air goes into it, etc. And we also have a rotating fluid zone. This means that you can do a pump. 
uh, with a new version of uh, discovery and define a region that will has got a rotating fluid in it. Um, the second uh, thing I want to define is an outlet. So I'll do this is an outlet, and I'll give it a pressure once again. Just let's just give it a bit of back pressure. And you will see that it will also now be defined in my tree. So it's inlet, outlet, and I can browse between them and see what's happening. And then whether I define this as an in or outlet doesn't really matter. Um, the physics will sort itself out, but I'm going to make it an inlet because I kind of know that the that the fluid will be pulled in here. And I want to give it atmospheric pressure. Um, the reason for the simulation is, uh, is as a fertilizer mixer. Uh, and I want to get this all right because I've got a little 3D printer at home, so I want to print my own fertilizer mixer, and that diameter of that pipe um, will determine, and the diameter of this inlet or this interior here will determine whether the simulation is going to work or not, and I can specify some flow rates through it based on the pressure that my pump provides, and then I can calculate um, the, the amount of fertilizer being sucked in here. All right, I basically ready to go to start simulating this for now. Um, I've got an inlet, I've got an inlet, and I've got an outlet, and these certain pressures, etc. You will see now that I can define these as parameters to play around later, but I just want to get the simulation kind of going. So, so let's start it. I'm going to literally start the play button. You will see that it's starting to solve. Uh, there's a bit of chaos going on there initially, so let's have a little look at that. Um, and I can look now at, at different ways to do this. It's looking at vectors, and you can see the flood is pushing in, pulling out, pushing in, but it's not really doing much. Uh, let's do a different approach. You can see it's a bit stagnant there. Uh, it's now solving for a static case. I suspect my problem is that this venturi size there is actually too big. So there's not, not, not enough pressure drop over that. So let's plot static pressure for us for, for a uh, second and look what that looks like. And you can see there's not really much happening currently. So, so I need to change a couple of things to make this design work a bit better. So let's go back to design. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this diameter there smaller. And you will see that immediately after hitting enter, my flow updates, All right? It's solving for a steady case though. So let's, let's give it some time to, to reach the steady state. My GPU is not the best. Uh, it's a 3060 card. It's a 4,000 rand card or 6,000 rand card. Um, you will see it's, it, it will take a bit of time to, to get to a steady state solution. I'll show you a transient solution now, which is much more impressive, um, but the best, well, the better your graphic card, the quicker you will be able to, to get results from this. I hate it when this thing comes up here because now I can't reach where I want to go. All right, um, let's change the simulation option type to transient, time dependent. And I'll start it again. You will see now what's happening. It's giving a transient solution. Uh, let's give it a bit of particles. You can see the particles are starting to push in there. And I can plot some. All right, this looks better. So I kind of am getting there. I just need to see how I can optimize this now a little bit to get the sizes correct. Maybe I want to do um, something like moving this face out to reduce some of that swirl because we're going to have a problem in that area um, there. Let's move that for a second. Uh, so I'll take that edge and I'll move it. I don't want this thing to be here. Why did I move you? So let's move it out 20 millimeters. All right, and the flow will update. So you can see immediately that it, it's looking better already because I'm increasing that angle. Um, I also can go back to, this is now pressure, let's go back to, um, to velocity. So you can get a good idea of where the swirling will be happening. You can see there will be nice mixing with this. 
difference being pulled in there. And I can start playing with this. I, the other thing I can do is to is to make this even smaller. Let's make it three millimeters. I would have to move those edges out now, and you can see that the the outlet is kind of at the at the at the exit of that venturi, which is actually what I want because that means the mixing zone will will move a little bit to that side. I'll get a lot of mixing on this side. Maybe I don't want that. I can literally tell it undo and then take it back there. But I think you get the idea. This is gaming for engineers. And that's really, this is really cool because it's usable gaming. It's not just for fun, the fun. Right. Um, once you've got, once I get to, a, to, to something that is working pretty good, I can, this is the explore tab. There's the fidelity of the solution. If I move this tab onto the right hand side, it will, refine the mesh in a way, and I will get a bit more accurate results and more accurate flow patterns from this simulation, but it will take a bit longer to do this. I can also move to refine, which will now activate the Fluent GPU song. Before I do that though, I want to show you some parameters and how we can play around with this uh, in a very quick fashion, because the moment we take it to the Fluent Solver, it's more a traditional setup. I'll quickly show that at the end. Um, if I go to simulation here, I can start creating parameters. So one, the first parameter I want to do is I want to take this Venturi Inlet and I want to make that a parameter, right? So now you can see I've got parameters. There's my parameters and I can start defining a couple of things. The other parameter I want to make is the flow inlet pressure. Now let's make that a, another parameter. So there's the flow inlet pressure. And then I've got maximum velocity and maximum temperature and the pressure drop automatically being calculated. But I want to add monitors now. Um, if I go to, oh, no, 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 go away, go away. I have to wait for it to go away. Here we go. If I go to uh, monitors here, I can define some monitors if I start changing some of these um, design parameters. So let's, Tell it I want a mass flow monitor because I want to look at how much fertilizer is being sucked in here. Right? So you will see now the mass flow parameter there as well. And I can do all kinds of things now. I can I can add more parameters uh, for this angle here, for this length here, etc. But Let's not overcomplicate it for this short webinar. Let's just keep it like that. And I'm going to tell it now to update all these design points for me. So what it will do is it will actually calculate um, this mass flow there, the pressure drop and all these things. And it will display it once it's done. And you'll see that it's busy solving this ball. And this can take some time depending on the complexity of your problem to be able to do that. You will see also the monitor there um, is giving me a... I, I, I designed point now, it's calculated it, and it's giving a mass flow of, I suppose, 0 0.03 kilograms per second. Um, you can convert that to liters per second uh, if you want to, uh, whatever you want. This is just demo for me. But let's change something now. I can add now the design points to this whole thing. Um, before I do that, I want to show you if I change that back now to a different value, it's like two millimeters. Oh, it's telling me that the update of that thing has stopped. Let's just wait for this update to finish. I'll say some things. Uh, if this has to calculate the initial case. All right, but the idea of this is if I start changing these, this, these parameters, this little graph or this monitor will show me what the mass flow will do if I change that. Um, you can see the solution is now starting to converge again. You can actually change it back to a steady state uh, simulation, which will speed it up a little bit. Oh, and I've got fidelity on high. Let's make that low. That's maybe why. Hey guys, you can see I'm the sales guy. 
right. That's much faster. It's taking long because I set the fidelity high. So for demo, let's put it low. And uh, before I put in the zone points, I'm going to show you this monitor thing quickly. So if I change the diameter of that now to, let's, make, let's go back to, to 3 million, this is where it was. We'll just quickly resolve this and you will see a new design point appearing when it's uh, getting to the steady state. But let's wait for that. Now. See that it happens, and then I can start playing around with variations and looking at the mass flow coming out of that. Okay. So if I increase that diameter back to three millimeters, you can see that the mass flow is going down to 35 milliliters per second, um, roughly, depending on the altitude and the temperature, I suppose. Right, so this is the idea, idea of discovery is to be able to do these design studies very quickly and come up with something that you can send to the engineers to um, take further. Um, I can add variations now after it finishes updating uh, this whole thing here. Yeah. Um, and it will then solve all these parameters for me, um, and it will give me a graph of how the volume for the change due to that diameter, or whatever you want to define, or what the object, object, objective is of your simulation. Um, I'm going to stop that quickly just for time's sake. I think we're already at quarter to one, and I've, um, I'll show you guys we've got other meetings at one, so I'm going to finish ideally before that. Um, I want to go to the refine part quickly. Uh, let's just move this now back to something that works. Better, I suppose. And just wait for this um, to go away again. Because I want to move to a refine. And the moment you go to refine now, it will go to the Fluent GPU solver. Now, this is not now real-time simulation anymore, like the like we had up to now. We got kind of idea of where this all will work, etc. Uh, we can now use the Fluent GPU solver. So this means that it will actually start making an issue. So it will follow the traditional approach. So, uh, that's fine. Okay, I have to change my. I just want this thing to go away. Let's just go to steady state. The Fluent GPU solver doesn't support transient yet. So I would have to do that. And you will now, I can start it now. So, it's, it's using the Fluent GPU solver. And I'll show you in a, in a moment the mesh. Uh, this control here determines how fine it will be. It's busy updating this. Let's see the design point update now as well. It's busy solving. Let's just wait for it to complete a little bit. I think I, I think I overloaded my computer a bit with all the kicks that I did. A second. That's fine. It just show, it's just saying that it won't show results when there's the mesh. It won't show results while it's busy solving. Um, so this is the GPU solver, the, uh, the mesh that is built. You can see it's a pretty, it's a pretty nice getting started mesh. Uh, it even does uh, boundary inflation layers for that. You will see the moment that I make this now more high fidelity, the mesh will refine. Yes, you are right, Philemon. Refined mesh will uh, occupy more GPU space. Right, and. Um, I can start solving this thing now. It will be steady state. And it will take, take, take a bit of time to, to do that. 
once it's done, we will see some results. And you can see I can manipulate how I want to see these things. I can do ISO surfaces, for example, um, fluid lines. I can hide the mesh now if I want to. Right, and I can see that my refine is not going into that venture already. It's just been passing through. So I would need to do a bit more refinement in that. Um, this also works to change the geometry a little bit. If I make that now a little bit bigger, let's make it 1.5 millimeters, it will resolve the whole thing again. All right, but I think everybody gets the idea of where this tool fits into the uh, product development cycle or in any 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 engineering environment is to be able to do this kind of exploration um, early on in the process before you tell the CAD guys to make complex models. Any questions at this point? No, finished. It's quite nice. Yeah, it looks like a really handy tool. Um... I think obviously everybody asks normally what what is a typical license cost. I think that uh, that's normally the the yes. first question people ask. Okay, um, so there's there's a couple of options. You can either buy uh, just uh, ANSYS Discovery Simulation, um, and then there's physics add-ons now. So the fluent part, the refined part that I showed. Um, you can take that in FEA to a mechanical solution as well, and the same with the refined for the for the for the for the CFD, and then you can buy an add-on to these things. So I would uh, let me just open up my my quote generator so I can give you some figures uh, pricing-wise, because yes, in South Africa we are price sensitive, and the only reason for that is because we're sitting with a ridiculous exchange rate. Uh, I remember when I started selling. Answers the exchange rate was six rand to a dollar. <laughs> it was like really cheap to get the software. It wasn't even a problem. Yeah, six rand to the dollar make a big difference compared to 20, like almost 19, sitting, 20 now. Uh, ridiculous exchange rate. But then again, I think we can do not to bypass. Um, I believe that. There's many things we can do to 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 offset cost because we shouldn't actually look at the cost. We should more look at the value that you can get from this. It's a discovery simulation. Can you give an idea quickly? Yeah, maybe just an idea, and then I can follow up with Hans as well. Yeah. Time. So so let me so let me give you an idea quickly. So Hans's discovery simulation. That includes everything we did uh, now today, um, except going to the fluent part and the, and the, and the mechanical part. Uh, that that's roughly a, a hundred and eighty thousand rand per year lease price to get that, and you can also buy that on the short term. So if you want to go and and only use it for a short term of or a period of time, you're looking at roughly twenty twenty five thousand rand per month to lease this license. Um, so, it, so it comes in kind of a little bit above what you will get with a CAD seat, but much lower what you will get with, uh, with a typical ANSYS mechanical or CFD seat. Um, but we can send detailed quotations to you guys for those who are interested. So let us know and we can, we can do that very easily. Got a question from Philemon that says, is it possible to, to, possible to view real-time convergence criteria during the simulation? So for the explore part, you won't be able to see that um, because it's just solving real transient. Um, uh, it's a different methodology that it uses all, all together. And then with the fluent side, you can add a monitor for, for, for convergence. Although I think you'd rather go into the full fluent interface if you want to get that kind of accuracy. Um, but it will give you an idea of convergence in the end uh, in, in discovery. All right, are there any people that joined us halfway through the meeting that we didn't treat? Laura? I see we've 12 now. 
Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> I'm unmuting myself. Um, Mustafa. Mustafa. Yeah, Mustafa. Uh, Sapilo. And Zinmalase. Okay. All right. I think what we'll do is we need to wrap it up. Um, yeah. Thanks for the time. I, I'm i really excited about this product because I think it's a great tool. Uh, and especially for education, uh, we've seen that at a lot of our clients, uh, there's young engineers coming in without the experience of how thick should this beam be to withstand a certain load, etc. And this is a great educational tool for young engineers to, to, to get some experience in how designs will perform. And that's where I see this, this tool for South Africa anyway positioned is where you give um, young engineers this tool to be able to play around and come up with better designs um, without any experience. Obviously, we need to transfer that experience from senior engineers down to the junior ones, but this will help them to, to explore engineering a bit and to enjoy it at the same time. Yeah, I agree. Thanks a lot, Isaac. Is there um, any other questions? I think you've done a very good job yourself in giving the overview as well as the demo. Um, so I think we can definitely we'll, we'll share the recording and we can follow up if there's questions afterwards. Yeah, please let me know. I'm unsure about the, there's a question about the student version. Um, I have no idea if uh, answers discovery is included in the student version, but we it's can make not sure. Yeah, it's not I'm part not sure. of the um, the it's not part of the campus academic campus wide solution. So it's not part of the multi physics campus solution, but it is something that can be discussed on an ad hoc basis if there's a requirement. Um, yeah, so if academics. you so if you want a trial of this, um, there is a trial available available for answers discovery. So please just send us an email, and we can arrange that for you. Just make sure that you've got a valid GPU card in your machine before you. Uh, request the trial. I see Donnie, the PC is typing. Okay. Thanks, Donnie. Thanks, everybody. Well, Let's go eat lunch. Have a good weekend and um, and let us know if there's anything that we can help with. We'll be in touch. Thank you.